Fair Play, a novel by Pete Fisher. Chapter 2. Tinsel and Twang By the time Christmas came around that year, Martin could hardly contain his excitement, although the Christmas ritual was still much the same. He'd helped decorate the living room with holly and paper chains, Christmas cards were hung on the walls and lined up on the mantelpiece, the Christmas tree was festooned with lights, shiny baubles, glittery tinsel, and topped with a well-worn fairy. A coal fire burned in the grate. After lunch, his mum had slipped out of the room discreetly and returned with a huge present, handing it to Martin with a big grin. Happy Christmas, Martin. He ripped off the paper and revealed a soft leather guitar-shaped carrying bag, which he unzipped slowly. Inside was a nylon-strung acoustic guitar, a set of pitch pipes to tune it, and Bert Whedon's optimistically titled tutorial book, Play in a Day. Martin was simply delighted. He immediately put the guitar on his lap and began tinkering away cautiously. He thanked his mum and dad. They both grinned. His initial delight was short-lived, however. Over the ensuing weeks, he realised that the task in hand was a great deal more difficult than he had anticipated. He hadn't really given it any serious thought at all. He had naively imagined that via some kind of magical process, he would absorb the ability to play just by hearing the guitar on records or on the radio. Of course, the book's title was illusory. It would get you playing in a day, maybe one or two chords, provided you could tune your instrument. Martin realised he needed a whole lot of days to learn to play properly. The biggest problem was that his fingers seemed too small. It hurt like hell if he tried to play for too long. He managed to pick out a few single-note melodies, one of which was the theme to the James Bond film, Goldfinger. He learned to play it quite convincingly on the thickest bass string. The chords in the book required a strength and reach that his left hand simply didn't have. After a few weeks, his hopes of playing seemed completely dashed and a sense of guilt crept over him. His dad's words of warning came back to him. He finally put the instrument back in its carrying bag and committed it to solitary confinement in his bedroom cupboard. Almost a year went by. The guitar stayed in the cupboard most of the time. Martin would get it out occasionally, almost nostalgically, and see if maybe something magic had happened in the meantime. It hadn't, of course. The cheap neck had simply warped even more, so that the strings were now even higher off the fretboard, making the guitar almost impossible to play. Martin had realised that nylon strings sounded wrong anyway. What he really loved was the twang that steel strings produced, particularly on electric guitars. The answer could be to get a guitar with steel strings. He was 13 now. He knew it would take him years to save up enough money for another guitar, even if he washed the car and mowed the lawn every week. He had to talk to Dad. His dad was actually surprisingly savvy when it came to contemporary music. He had a room designated as his den where he could shut the door and relax with a tumbler of whiskey and his pipe. He had his own record player and a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Around this time, he'd become a fan of Joan Byers, Buffy St. Marie and Julie Felix, all guitar players as well as singers. It dawned on Martin that he might now be all the more approachable. Martin knocked on the den door and entered the room of sanctuary. 
Dad, I need a proper guitar, one with steel strings. His dad turned the record player down and took a sip of his whiskey. Listen, you got a guitar for Christmas. You gave up and hid it in the cupboard. Why should I get you another one? I need a better one, Dad. Martin's dad sighed and puffed on his pipe. He finished his whiskey and thought for a moment. Look, if I get you another guitar, you're going to take it seriously and have lessons. I will, Dad. I really want to play properly, not just mess around. His dad stood up and put on a Joan Byers LP. Her distinctive finger-style guitar filled the room. Do you think you could play like that? I don't know, Dad, but I can try. Martin became the proud owner of a steel-stringed acoustic guitar that Christmas. His mum also booked him a course of lessons for the new year with a local teacher. Martin had already begun experimenting on his new guitar. He'd mastered one or two more basic chords. The steel strings sounded so much better, but they really cut into his fingers and produced painful blisters if he tried to practice for too long. For his first guitar lesson, Martin's mum dropped him off with his guitar at a neat semi-detached house across town. Martin rang the doorbell nervously. He was welcomed in by a rather portly middle-aged lady. She had long, coiffured, raven-black hair, a strikingly coloured floral pattern dress, and matching blue coral necklace and brooch. She ushered him into her cosy living room. An upright piano stood in one corner, a guitar leant against one of the armchairs. Several gaily decorated ukuleles hung on the wall, and there were paintings of what looked like Hawaii. Martin recognised her in several photographs of what was evidently a Hawaiian-style band. She introduced herself as Martha, offered him some tea, and waved him towards the sofa. While they drank their tea, Martha explained that her husband played Hawaiian steel guitar. The photos were of his band. She played guitar and sang. Martin was impressed, even though it wasn't really his kind of music. To be taught by a pro of any kind had to be a good thing. Martha asked him what kind of music he liked and what he wanted to play. Martin answered that he was a big fan of anything with a guitar in it, but that lately he'd developed a love of the blues. Martha liked jazz. She warned him that he had to learn to walk before he could run. Before you can specialise in any style, a certain amount of fundamental knowledge was required. Martin was a conscientious student at first, dutifully practising and generally being well prepared for the next lesson. After a couple of months, he realised this wasn't taking him where he wanted to go. Martha's repertoire was geared to the needs of polite dinner dances and weddings. Martin's initial enthusiasm waned steadily. He felt he'd got as far as he could get with Martha. Martin realised once more that his expectations had perhaps been unrealistic. It was clear that he had a hell of a lot of work to do. He sat in his bedroom for hours playing along to records. The music he dreamed of being able to play in a band one day. His dad stuck his head around the door occasionally. Sometimes he even came in to listen to music that Martin thought would be much too far out. Martin began to be in demand when his parents had guests for dinner. Come on, Martin, get your guitar out. His dad could be very persuasive. Martin would reluctantly go and fetch it and nervously perform something simple for those present. 
He felt embarrassed, almost as if it was some kind of penance. He realised that not only was his dad encouraging him, but that the whole point of it was to play in front of other people. 